against Angel Manfredi. Mayweather three years younger, an inch and a half taller, one inch greater in reach. They've gained eight and nine pounds respectively since yesterday's weigh-in. Punch stat numbers, Larry. Uh, look at how active they are. Mayweather is a more defensive fighter. Manfredi will probably have to step up those numbers to slow him down. Both fighters use the jab effectively. Mayweather's is probably a more effective jab. And rules of the bout with the master of the ringside scoring, our unofficial scorer, Harold Letterman. Thank you, Jim. The Floyd Mayweather Jr. Angel Manfredi fight is scheduled for 12 rounds, once again using the unified rules. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold. And now the walkout for Angel Manfredi accompanied by the music of a hip-hop recording artist named Kid Rock, who has uh, written special lyrics now to follow his friend. El Diablo, Hell's Angel, Barry Indiana, Chicago, Angel is indicating that he's giving up being the devil, which is really disguised for him now becoming a true angel. <laughs> I thought he'd already done that. <laughs> Am I wrong or does this guy have a spiritual transformation for every fight? <laughs> Another reinvention of himself. The same one we've seen before. Or Angel Manfredi. The two losses early in his career. Present win streak, as you see, 23, including the knockout of Arturo Gatti earlier this year, which did the most to give Angel his present reputation in the sport. Prince Nassim's promoter Frank Warren was there that night eight months ago to watch Angel beat Gotti and went back home to England to decide that his fighter shouldn't face Manfredi at this particular yeah, time. Yeah, and there you see the little angels. There you go. Three, three children. For the recently married Angel, who got married on Thanksgiving Day to the mother of his three children and longtime other half, Yvette, lovely lady who comes to the fighter meetings with him and is clearly the calmer half of the Manfredi coupling. The 90s is the decade of grand entrances, and Angel is one who has made it grand for himself. Here you see... Floyd just kind of walks in, huh? All the decades before the 90s. <laughs> I'll be coming to the ring now, says Floyd Mayweather. Behind his right shoulder, his father and trainer, Floyd Mayweather Sr., who once went 10 rounds with Sugar Ray Leonard, the fighter to whom Roy, or I should say Floyd, likes most to compare himself. A 
18 fights so far since having turned pro after his bronze medal performance at the 1996 Olympics. 14 KOs. First defense of the title that he won easily from the vastly more experienced Gennaro Hernandez. And now let's go up to ring announcer Mark Barrow to get this one started. Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Promotions in association with Top Rank Incorporated, the Mikasuki Indian Gaming, HBO Sports, and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, this Bud's for you, presents the Network of Champions main event of the evening, 12 rounds for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship of the world. Ring officials assigned by the World Boxing Council, President in attendance, Jose Suleiman. Your judges at ringside are from Tallahassee, Florida, Jay Cassis, from Tokyo, Japan, Kim Morita, and from Las Vegas, Nevada, Dalby Shirley. Your referee for this event from the Magic City Silver Sequin Trunks with gold trim, Weighing in at 130 pounds, his professional record, 25 victories, two defeats, one draw, and 20 wins coming by way of no Man Freddy! Man Freddy! His opponent in the red corner, wearing red trunks with blue and white trim, also weighing 130 pounds, he is undefeated in 18 professional bouts with 14 wins coming by way of knockout originally from Grand Rapids, Michigan and now boxing out of Las Vegas, Nevada the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather Mayweather 12 rounds for the WBC Championship of the world. Floyd, Floyd, let's go, Floyd. Let's go, turn around, let's go. Angel. All right, gentlemen, we've gone over everything in dress room. Let's just watch the low blows. Remember, here's the belt line. Keep me here above, all right? Watch your heads. Just keep it fair. Questions? Questions here? Questions here? Good luck to both of you. They're risking everything to win everything. But somehow when you risk everything, you wind up okay. Roy, uh, Angel Manfredi is wearing leggings or stockings or something of the sort. Isn't that going to make him sweat more if the, if the bout goes the distance? Yeah, it probably make his legs sweat a little bit more, but not too much because it's kind of cool here. It's winter time, so it shouldn't hurt him too bad. Yeah, plus there's massive air conditioning in the tent. Referee is Frank Santore. was the uh, tinkle of the bell for round one. Right hand lead lands from Mayweather, countering over Manfredi's jab. Lord has very quick hands. Quick hands and quick feet. Punches you and then poof, he's gone. And the Mayweather camp sees the speed advantage as being so big that Floyd Sr. relentlessly insulted Manfredi in the promotional buildup to the fight. He took great pleasure in saying in front of Manfredi, he's a bum and my son will beat him easily. <laughs> Fighter was considerably more diplomatic in his public pronouncements and never, never misses the chance to say Angel's a good fighter and I'm sure he'll fight well. 
And fighters usually try to maintain respect, good respect for one another. Already you, you've picked up a key element of the Mayweather plan. When Manfredi tries to stick his jab, Floyd Jr. thinks he can counter rapidly over it because he doesn't think Angel gets it back rapidly enough. He already was able to count it one time early in the fight. And Freddie, it would appear, can do best if he can pin Floyd Jr. against the ropes and hammer him on the inside. He has to try to pressure Floyd, but he has to be sure that he doesn't run into any of Floyd's big, quick punches. Counter punches will what they will be. Freddie trying to get to the body as he momentarily flashes Mayweather to the ropes. Floyd slips away. Mayweather starting to flick his jab. Man, Freddie's throwing good body shots here early too, which will neutralize the speed is something that he can do it over a period of time. But Floyd has very good hands. He shows very good hand movement. Move. Angel says, I have to cut off the ring, cut off the ring, and then cut it off again. So far, he has on a couple of occasions been able to do exactly that and pin Mayweather against the ropes. Now he lands one again as Mayweather slips back away from the ropes. Doing much better in the second half of the round there, Freddie, than he did in the early on. And a body shot by Mayweather to punctuate round one. You're reaching on this guy, you understand? Work the jab first, okay? When he starts going around, you cut him off. I want the double jab, you're not using your jab. Don't reach, first touch him with the jab a little bit. Then start moving in. I don't want you reaching, okay? Get good on stick. What do you think? Use your jab, okay? Speed back is on your left. Mayweather dominated the early part of the Take round, comes back at the very end with a nice body shot followed by a jab. Steadily, if you ever want a spectacular silver pair of boxing trunks like those worn by Angel Manfredi, you can get them from a woman in New York of Puerto Rican extraction named Margarita Santiago. She does the trunks for Lou Duval and for Manfredi and also has done some work for Lennox Lewis at times. The, the little wings on Angel's trunks are the, the best touch I've seen. <laughs> but they're not going to give him speed. Good right hand by Mayweather. And he follows it up by following straight up the middle with another right hand lead. Left hook lands for Mayweather and he's gone right up the middle through Manfredi's guard. Manfredi trying to find him so that he can cut off the ring and try to hammer him to the body as he was able to do in the latter stages of round one. Yeah, and Mayweather turned south for a moment, Charlie. Didn't fool Manfredi at all. He fought, came in with a straight right hand. This is the pace that Manfredi needs to make Mayweather fight. He has to make the young quicker fighter throw a lot of punches in order to neutralize some of his speed. He just has to make sure that he does not run into the big counter punches. So the Manfredi plan should be pressure, pressure, pressure. Yes, now Manfredi turns south for, for a moment. And turns back. Good right hand by Manfredi. Straight up the middle by Manfredi. If you slow than your opponent, the thing to do is to pressure him to try to make his arms tired so that you can wear him down to where he can be not as when he, when he won't be as fast as he was in the early part of the fight. Right hand lead lands for Manfredi, and he comes back with a hammering left hook to the body.
Mayweather was so successful early countering over Manfredi's jab that Manfredi, for the moment, has dispensed with it and is leading with the right hand instead. Yes, his corner told him to throw the double jab some, but he's doing the right thing. Pick the time to throw the jab because that's what Mayweather's looking for. And Mayweather seems a tiny bit confused as to what to do to mount his own offense. Now that Manfredi isn't throwing the jab, but there's a good idea. Mayweather with a right over the top stuns Manfredi. He's not confused at all. Pounding, pounding, and this one's going to be stopped too. Same spot in the ring where the heavyweight bout was stopped. Just taking a knee, pulled himself together, maybe too proud to do that. That's usually what happens with a champion. Much too proud to go down unforcefully. He seemed he seemed at a moment even, even to consider going down and then and pulled himself back up. And and the difference here in the stoppage guys to me is that unlike Tua, Mayweather was landing virtually every punch in the rally. Yeah, he's landing a lot more punches. He was hurting Manfredi. Manfredi was not throwing punches back, and he wasn't doing a great job of getting out the way of, out of the way of punches either. Yep, all, all of which conspires to say it was a more defensible stoppage than the one which preceded it in the heavyweight fight. Although, again, Angel Manfredi is going to say that was too quick. No, you have to give the referee credit, too, because he thought about it a couple times, but he said, wait a minute, let me make sure I don't do this too early. We've had one early stoppage. Let's not make it two in one night. But a period of time passed, and Freddie wasn't throwing back, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. has another big, stunning victory to cap off his rise to stardom in 1998. And with yet another nod to Roy Jones and Shane Mosley and what they both accomplished this year, there, in the eyes of many, is your fighter of the year for 98, Floyd Mayweather Jr. I think he's had a terrific year, but Shane Mosley, to me, who defended his title five times and won five stoppages and knockouts, was the fighter of the year. There you saw that quick right hand, what makes this fighter so dangerous that you don't know when it's coming. And here's the rally that prompted the referee, Frank Santori, to stop it. Land, land, miss, land. Miss, miss, land, miss. Notice Manfredi did not throw a noticeable punch during that whole time. Yeah, from this point forward, I don't think he throws another shot. Should have gone down. Should have gone down. Would have given himself a chance to continue. Too proud to go down. Yes, he should have taken a knee. But there you go again when a guy's a champion, they hate to go to not, I mean, to go to the cameras. No champion wants to go to the cameras. Yeah, and while we were critical of the referee in the heavyweight bout, it, it's like NFL officiating. It's easy to criticize them. It's not an easy job to go do. No, it's not. That's why I don't have much to say about it. Let's go to Mark Barrow for the official particulars on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes. 47 seconds of the second round. Referee Frankie Santori stops his mouth. The winner by tactical knockout and WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Pretty Boy Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather. And there you can see Angel Manfredi telling the referee what he thinks of the stoppage which has given him the third loss of his career and has allowed Floyd Mayweather Jr. to retain his world 130 pound title. Manfredi's wife and brother silent behind him while Angel sounds off on what he surely thought was a premature stoppage. And now, Larry Merchant with the referee, Frank Santori. Larry. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Frank, you describe why you felt the fight should be stopped when you did. Uh, man, Freddie was taking punishment and was not answering back. I will be uh, concerned with the fighter's safety, and I just felt that he wasn't in uh, any shape to protect himself. 
did you, are you saying you said something to him during this barrage about... Yes, sir. I, uh, when I get close to a fighter, I'll say, Angel, you've got to fight back. I'll tell him but right there, I said, Angel, you've got to fight back, and he didn't respond. In the first fight, the referee said that he had told the fighters, if you're in trouble like that, take a knee and get yourself a rest. Did you say anything to these fighters? Or if, if Manfredi had taken a knee to give himself a chance to re recover, would you have allowed the fight to go on? Yes, I would have. If he would have gone to a knee and taken a knockdown, it would have given him a chance to recuperate. He would have gotten an eight count. As you know, there's no standing eight counts under the universal rules and under Florida rules and WBC rules. If he had gone to a uh, knee and taken it, it would have shown ring generalship, showed that he had, uh, he was in command of his facilities, and I would have let the fight go. But as it was, he didn't respond. Thank you very much, Frank. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, Jim, let's see if we can get Floyd Mayweather Jr. in here. No, first we're going to go back to you and then try to corral this fighter. All right, thanks very much. Well, Roy, a less compelling case for a rematch here, although it could be a consideration. Yeah, it could be a consideration because I'm sure that Angel will look at the tape and he'll decide that, you know what, I should have taken a knee. That would have been the smartest thing for Angel Manfred to do at that particular time because you can't blame the referee this time. The kid did not throw, throw a convincing punch within about a 10-second span. He had to do what he had to do. All right, let's go back to Larry Merchant with Floyd Mayweather Jr. Congratulations, uh, Floyd. Did you think that he was defenseless on the ropes when you were pummeling him? Well, um, I won't say I was pummeling. I'll just say I was throwing some combination, and he, and he wasn't responding back. But first of all, I want to thank God, thank the Mayweather family, thank my grandmother, my best friend, Sean, and my girlfriend, Melissa Brim, for all supporting me. Did you hear the referee say in there, you have to punch back to uh, Manfredi? Well, when the back, when we were in the dressing room, he said, if you throw in combinations and throw a lot of hard shots and the guy's not coming back, I may stop the fight. He said, if Manfredi was doing the same to me, he would have stopped the fight. So I feel it was, it was a good stoppage, but I feel Man Manfredi's a very, very good fighter. He's tough, he's strong, and he's dedicated to the sport of boxing. He, he, he got you a couple of times in there. Um, were your thoughts that this might go longer, or did you have any premonition that you could hurt him that quickly? Well, a lot of people don't believe in my, my knockout power. You got to realize, out of 18, coming in this, out of 18 fights, I had 14 knockouts. But I just um, took my time, relaxed, and um, stayed focused, and um, I seen the opening shot, so I took it, and um, that's the shot that hurt him. So I threw combinations in. All right, we're going to try to show you the, the punch that hurt him, and then how you finish it. Describe what you see. See, right there, the right hand that shook him up. Throwing combinations. Uppercuts, he's not doing nothing, look. I'm steady throwing shots. He's not coming back with nothing. And right there, right there, open shot. I'm still throwing shots, look, he's not coming back with nothing. Look. You like that fighter in the red trunks? Uh, I like, I like, I like all fighters, man. Um, I, I give respect to any fighter that get in and, um, Show, you know, give up a good fight, and Manfredi's a very good fighter. Uh, you have quickly established yourself in many people's eyes as the best junior lightweight now out there. What are your immediate goals? Who would you like to fight? Um, I would like to f fight the best they got out there in the 130-pound weight class. I mean, whoever they want me to fight, I'll fight. I wouldn't fight any 130-pounder. Um, just talking over my promoter, Bob M., and um, talk to my dad, and we'll set the fight up. Hopefully we can come on HBO and fight. So you're you're not thinking yet that you have to move up in weight. Obviously you're tall enough to go up at least to a full lightweight, but that's a way away. Well, right now I come in can't weigh 135, so I want to move up right away because in, once I get to train them, I'm, I'm down the weight. The first week I was in camp, I was uh, Angel Man Freddy. If we can find him in a moment, amid all this chaos, normal for boxing, and here he is. Angel, you got caught a good right hand. He wobbled you. You went to the you went to the ropes. He threw a lot of punches. Not all of them landed, but according to the referee, he told you you have to start firing back, and you didn't. Give me your version. 
come on. Everybody know it, the whole world knows it. He caught me with two good shots. I was not dazed at all. And they're gonna jump in and stop the fight. The referee did not tell me, let's start throwing punches. It was all, politics is all rigged up for him to go ahead and win. Wait a minute. I understand. Could you have... Can you show the replay on that? Yes, we will. Can you have taken a knee to give yourself a chance to pull back? All right, here we are. Let's take a look and describe what you see. There's the right hand that staggered you. Now describe what happened on the ropes. Boy, he caught me a couple good shots. I was staying composed. I, I, I stood composed. And still, still, he couldn't stop me, though. He could not. He could not. Look, he's missing all these shots. And he stopped the fight. How can you stop the fight? Gotti did more than that, and, he, and, 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 and they didn't stop the fight. That's not, that's not supposed to happen in true are championship you, fights. Are you saying that Gaddy hit you hard at some times? And yes, most definitely. It was, it was competitive. We're both hitting each other. That's what the fight game's about. Mayweather hit me two good times, and then a lot of, a lot of times it grazed a couple shots. I stood composed. I put my hands up, but he did not hurt me. Why didn't you fire back? Because I stood composed. I took my time. I was waiting for the openings. But he did not hurt me in there. I don't know why they stopped the fight so weak like that. It wasn't even right. It wasn't a championship fight like a championship fight is supposed to be. Knock me out to win the fight, please. Thank you very much, Angel. So, the prediction you heard before the fight was from Floyd Mayweather Sr. that this would be a walk in the park. And indeed it was for Floyd Mayweather Jr. As far as David Tua is concerned,